Hey guys, I'm Danny Mosca, otherwise known as Psychedillo. You can find me by that name on Instagram and YouTube. And today I'm partnering with Comic Con Africa in collaboration with Brother to teach you how to make your very own Cora bodysuit. Today we'll be using the Brother Extra Tough sewing machine. I have a lot of experience throughout my cosplay career working with mechanical machines. This is the first time I'll be using an electronic machine, so I'm super, super excited to see how this machine works and how it stands up to the task. I started by making a general mock-up of the suit and then went in and added my own extra seams and extra panels just to make sure that the costume was as accurate as possible. After that, you're gonna go in and neaten up all the lines that you've made and because I'm a foam smith at heart, I added a bunch of registration marks so that when I put the costume together, I know where everything lines up. After this, cut out each and every pattern piece I tend to only pattern the one side of my body as we're more than likely going to be flipping it over and mirroring it so there's no point in cutting out, you know, an entire suit's worth of patterns. I prefer doing this over your usual paper pattern because it fits your body a lot better and you can tweak it where necessary. Be sure to add a reference or just a title to all of your pattern pieces so that once everything is cut out, you'll know exactly what needs to go where and how to place them. What you're going to need for this project is both blue and white material. Because this is a bodysuit, I highly recommend getting material with a bit of stretch, so either two-way or three-way stretch depending on what you're comfortable with, and this should work perfectly. Using the pattern pieces that we've just cut out, you're going to fold over the material you want to use for the bodysuit, pin down that pattern piece on the fold, and then trace around it. This way, whatever you cut out will be mirrored, meaning you don't have to cut out two pieces and there shouldn't be any extra seams running anywhere. Don't forget to add on those registration marks you made earlier. This will make it extremely easy to line everything up when you're pinning all of the pieces together for the final product. Next, you're gonna cut out the piece that we've just traced out. I don't think this is the correct way to do it, but I tend to cut a little bit extra off of that line that we've just traced, and that serves as my seam allowance. So the line that you're, you've drawn on is the line that you'll sew. I don't think it's correct, but it's just how I work and it works for me. So that's how I do it. Obviously, this is a step that you would repeat for each and every piece that you're tracing and cutting out. So don't forget to do that for the rest of your pattern pieces. After pinning your pieces together, we're going to get right down to sewing, which is the point of the video. Um, sewing is pretty explanatory. I would recommend technically using a zigzag stitch to sew this type of material. But the specific type of material I got was just too flimsy to, for the zigzag stitch to work. So I ended up using a straight stitch, which is a no-no. But once again, it worked for me. You're gonna keep pinning each and every piece on and sewing that piece down. It's, it's pretty self-explanatory, so I'll just let the video do the work. After sewing the different panels together, you're gonna hem all the sides just to neaten up the edges. So just fold over your material along the edge and sew that down.
Next up is the white hemming that Cora has on her arm holes and her neck hole. So I had to make my own bias tape for this because I wanted to use a screw material. Um, and <laughs> I ended up getting some sewing glue and I made my own like hems to then use to fold over the bias tape. You're gonna need three different widths worth of bias tape for this costume. One of them is going to be for the armholes, so those will be your thickest one, uh, pictured in the middle. You're going to need one that wraps around the collar, that's going to be significantly thinner. Um, and then you're going to have the thinnest piece of bias tape, which is the one that runs right across her chest, connecting her collar to her armhole. Here's an example of one of the bias tape that I've already folded over the armhole and pinned it down. Next, we're going to sew this bias tape onto the armholes. Um, I would highly recommend using a straight stitch for this because this is more of a decorative stitch than something that's holding the whole garment together. So you want it to be as neat and straight as possible. So I'd recommend using a straight stitch for it and just go slowly and carefully and just keep it as neat as possible. This is pretty much a step that you're going to keep repeating for every armhole and the collar and then finding the detail piece. The detail piece, I would highly recommend sewing onto the chest um, be right before you sew one of the armholes on. That way the armhole bias tape covers that extra strip of material, if that makes sense. Um, it can help keep your costume a lot neater. Um, so that's the way I did it. Obviously you can do whatever you want. And one of the final steps is to try on the bodysuit and see if everything fits, see if you're happy with how everything looks. Um, admittedly, I could have neatened quite a bit of my bodysuit. I could tighten up some areas, but this is one of the things that's important to do while you're sewing the bodysuit so that you don't have to make unnecessary tweaks while all the embellishments have been added on. And just like that, you've completed your own Cora bodysuit. This was my first time using an electronic sewing machine and I won't lie, there was a bit of a learning curve with it, but the machine performed well and the result is a super comfy Cora cosplay. So I'm looking forward to seeing you guys at Comic-Con Africa and hopefully I'll see a few more avatars running around.